We're working on the example on page 11 of the 4.7 notes. And as I was mentioning, several students stop right there. They don't look to see if one or both of the polynomials factor again. This one does. It's a difference of squares. So we do 1 plus, 1 minus, square root of y squared, y and y, square root of 9, 3 and 3. And then the polynomial that doesn't factor just comes down as part of the answer. So that is one of the eight on the test that factored twice. Several of them have GCFs first and then factoring. This one has grouping and then difference of squares. So let's do five together and then you can try six since six is going to be on your test. So the first thing I recognize is that there's four terms. Whenever there's four terms, we group. But before we group, we need to see if there's anything common to all the terms. No numbers, no x's, no y's. So we're good to start our grouping. So what's common here? x squared. So we take the x squared out. And we get y minus 4. Then we always have to bring this sign down so we can see our next GCF is going to be negative, And it's going to be negative 25. So remember, when you go to divide each term, make sure you divide by negative 25, not just 25. And that turns out to be positive 1y negative 4. Woohoo! They match! Yay! So that leaves us with y minus 4 as our third GCF. And then our second parenthesis will be what's left. And do I circle it? No! Because we have a difference of squares. So y minus 4 is not a difference of squares. This doesn't have an even exponent, so it just comes down as is. x squared minus 25 comes down as x plus 5, x minus 5, because this says the signs are different, and the square root of x squared is x, square root of 25 is 5. So all of this will be your answer. I would say 50% of the class stop right here. So you have to be on the lookout for factoring again. And this is a difference. And these are called squares. That's how we know it goes again. So square is any number that you can find a number multiplied by itself that will give you this. 5 times 5. x times x. For instance, on y, nothing, no whole number times itself is going to give me y. I'd have to do square root y times square root y. This actually can be factored with square roots. You learn about that in upper level math classes. Square root y plus 2, square root y minus 2. But for our intents and purposes, we call that prime. OK, time to shut off the video. And you guys try one. And then check back with me. And we'll grade it together. Okay, four terms, nothing common, so that tells me to jump into GCF. So the GCF here is x squared again. So I divide each one by x squared, and I get y squared minus anything divided by itself is 1. And there's that tricky negative again, so that means my GCF is going to be negative, and it looks like 4 is common to both. So I divide this term by negative 4, this term by negative 4, so I get positive 1, y squared, and then minus 1. Parentheses match. That's our hint. We're on the right track. Yay! So we pull out our next GCF, which is y squared minus 1, and What's left? x squared minus 4. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? Difference of squares. Remember how I told you one's everything? Difference of squares. They both factor. 
So this answer is going to have four parentheses. So they're both a difference of squares. That means both of them have different signs. So let's get our four parentheses laid out here. So y plus 1, y minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2. In order doesn't matter. You could list the minus first and the plus second. I just always do the plus. But certainly no order that matters. I took this one off the practice test and test, so we're not going to do that one. If you encounter that in Alex, you can let Alex show you how to do it. But at this point in the game, I think it's just going to confuse you, so I'm not going to include that one. I used to on the test, and nobody got it right. And I'm like, okay, they can learn that in the next class. It's a little bit tough. We're just now barely learning the factoring patterns. We don't need any tricky ones, so... We're going to skip seven. Okay, our last two factoring patterns are both cubes. Cubes are different than squares because we can have a minus or a plus. So squares can only have a minus. That's why it's called difference of squares. But cubes can be plus or minus. So, and then the factoring pattern is the same. The only thing that differs is signs. So, this is my invention, I'll have you know. Soap. My class and I came up with that. So, soap tells us how to do our signs. So, anytime we see a cube, we use soap. And students like soap so much, they try to do it all over the test. Don't do it all over the test. It has to be a cube. Cube means the exponents will be 3, 6, 9, 12. So multiples of 3. And the numbers will be cubes like 27, which is 3 times 3 times 3. Or 64, which is 4 times 4 times 4. Or 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2. In fact, let's go down here and just write the first 5 or 6 cubes. So 1 cubed is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And you might see the 6, so let's do it. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. Once in a while you'll see 7, which is 343. But if you know those 6, you're good. So those are the coefficients that we could have in front of the variables. The variables themselves have to have exponents that are divisible by 3. That means 3, 6, 9. So that's what the exponents will be. So SOAP tells us how to do our sign. S stands for same sign as the problem. O stands for opposite sign of the original problem. And AP means the last sign will always be positive. Same thing with the plus. Same as the original. Opposite of the original. Always positive. And then we do cube roots on this one, which isn't surprising since we did square roots above. The cube root of a cubed is a, cube root of b cubed is b. And then I made up another acronym for this parenthesis. SMS stands for square multiply square. So we take this number that we got from doing the cube root, we square it. That gives us a squared. Then we multiply the two, and remember, don't say, change the signs. The signs are set by soap. When we multiply a times b, we get ab. And then square means square the second number, b times b, b squared. And it works the same for plus. Cube root of both of these is a and b. Then we square a. Then we multiply a and b. Then we square b. But we always do the signs first, because ask any teacher, and they'll say, oh, the most missed thing on cubes by far are the signs. So that's why my class and I one summer made up this little acronym. And now textbooks have even adopted it because I put it in a textbook that I wrote for, um, oh, I don't know, when I'm, probably about 10 years ago. So, yeah, they've stolen it. I should have copyrighted it. So same, opposite, always positive. That's how we figure out the signs looking at the original problem. So let's see what this looks like in real life. 
with a real problem and not just a bunch of letters. So you may want to keep that first sheet handy because it has your cubes on it and you're going to need it to help you identify which numbers are cubes. So let's just look down the list. 125. Yep, it's in the list. So that's a cube. One's in the list. That's a cube. Eight's in the list. That's a cube. 27 is in the list. That's a cube. One eighth. One's a cube. Eight's a cube. 64 is a cube. And notice all the exponents. Three three, three, three. So all of those are cubes. And remember on cubes, it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus, they both factor. See, we have factoring patterns for both. So we don't have to check and make sure it has a minus sign like on the squares. So how about we do eight and 10 and then I'll let you do nine. So we'll skip nine and we'll do eight and 10 because I want us to practice a couple. 11 and 12 are a little bit tricky, so we'll work those together, but I do want you to have one under your belt. So I'll let you do nine. We'll do eight and 10. So for number eight, cube, cube, cube. So we're good to go on the cube. So cube is the only factoring pattern we have that has a little parenthesis and it has a big parenthesis. So we still have to look for GCFs, no GCFs, then we fill our signs in with soap. And remember, soap only works for cubes. Same sign as the problem. Opposite of the problem. Always positive. So we just get it all set up and ready. Then as I showed you in the example, you do cube roots. So if you look over here, 125 is 1, 2, 3, 4 the cube of 5. So the cube root of 125 is 5. And then the cube root of x cubed, cut the exponent in 3, so x to the first. So there's my first. Cube root of 1 is 1. One's always nice and handy because it's easy to do. So this is the cube root of that. What that means is 5x times 5x times 5x is that. And 1 times 1 times 1 is that. So when I say cube root, it means this number times itself three times gives you that back. This number times itself three times gives you that back. And then this is where you use my other acronym, square multiply square. And if you want to use a couple extra letters at the beginning just to get you used to it. And so now we only look at this so you can see how important this is because if you mess this up, it's going to mess this up. So you have to be really careful when you do your cube roots because now you're going to use this to help you fill that in. So square means take that first number and multiply it by itself. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. Remember how we have to add the exponents in multiplication? And we never change the signs. They're set in soap, so don't worry about signs. Multiply mean take the first term times the second. So 5x times 1. 5x times 1 is 5x. Square means take the last term and multiply it by itself. 1 times 1, 1. Done. So not quite as easy as difference of squares, but not so bad, right? Once you remember the soap and the square multiply square, then really all you have to do is be able to take cube roots. So, Okay, let's do one more together. Let's do this fraction one because I don't want to have you do the fraction one on your own as your first one. So we'll come back to that. So this one... 1's a cube, 8's a cube, x cubed's a cube, because it's divisible by 3, and 64's a cube. So the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 64 is 4. And we're almost out of video time, so I think we're going to, I'm going to just stop at 30 seconds early, and then we'll pick up on 10 when we get back.